If you don't see wine's color, do you think you could tell the difference between red and white wine? Whenever we taste wine from pitch black glasses, my mentor Peter said, A lot of tasters can't tell the difference between red and white wine. That's true. Never mind what's in the glass. So I did some research. Quite recently, an institute named Vengi Millezim did a test. They used these black glasses and they looked the same with what I use. Their results saying, Sur l'intégralité des 65 personnes interrogées, seuls 51% d'entre elles ont eu trois bonnes réponses. So they did the test on 65 people and only 51% could tell the difference. The rest of it, 49%, couldn't. So the result was half and half. So I got curious. This is their story. But how would it be if I do the test on my mentor? He always said he has so much experience, but we've never done this kind of test. So I dare do the test on him. I gave him an impression that I was serving white wine first and then red. And I chilled the red, but not the white. So let's see how it worked. We are going to taste two wines today. I see we have the dreaded black glasses again. Yeah, <laughs> you don't like these glasses, right? I like the shape. But you don't like the color. I don't like the color. The good Lord saw fit to give us five senses. Yeah. Why would we not be allowed to use them all? I remember you said previously that tasting from these black glasses is extremely difficult. It is. Even for wine professional? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Because one of the most important ways in which we assess wine, and the first way we assess wine, is with our eyes. You put wine in a black glass, you can't see the color. Uh -huh. You can't see the density. You can't see whether it's clear or not. So there are no visual clues at all. You suddenly realize that when you know whether the wine is white, pink, rosé, mm -hmm. old, young, alcoholic, whatever, you suddenly cut down all the number of possibilities. So all the possibilities that you can eliminate visually, uh -huh. you can't eliminate. And is it that meaningful, that important? It is that meaningful because it has been proven that there are some wine professionals who cannot tell red wine from white wine. From black glasses? From black glasses. And these are good tasters. It's just if you've got five senses, four senses working on it, we some are more important than others. Usually we use uh, four senses, right? You can't hear one. So without seeing the color, you can use only three senses? Basically. And it makes wine tasting super difficult, even for professionals. Yes. Okay, so probably you're going to suffer today. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I feel like every time I sit here in front of the camera with you on my right hand side, that I'm going to suffer? <laughs> <laughs> the next time I will sit in your left side. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, I prepared one white wine okay. and one red wine oh, for yeah, today. Okay. All right. It certainly puts to the test. You're <laughs> nasty. <laughs> I'm not that nasty. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> okay, the first wine. The second wine. Fortunately, this one's easy. Sorry? Fortunately, this one's easy. So, by smelling, uh, you can tell there's nothing red that smells like what's in glass number two. How can you say it? <laughs> I just said it. You know? <laughs> I haven't even tasted it yet. One number one is red. But please explain to our viewers how you can tell the difference then. It's more a process of elimination. The only information you've given me is one is red and one is white. So that's what I have to go on. So I say one number one is probably red. Let's see what one number two is. Mm -hmm. One number two is white. Uh -huh. Are you sure? Yeah. I think so. But you said uh, to taste the wines, basically you need to use four senses. Unless you're a superstar like me. <laughs> you only used one sense, right? So far. Can you taste a little bit and then no, swallow not it? Swallowing. No, no? I'll, I'll, I'll spit it with my eyes closed. Okay, cheers. I think this is somebody's cabin, eh? That's what I think, just on the nose. Please close your eyes when you spit out. Red wine, white wine. What's interesting to me is this one's cold uh -huh. and this one not so cold. Uh -huh. So I'm thinking maybe I've got it all wrong because maybe mm -hmm. you would not give me cold red wine and warm white wine. But it sounds to me like you're making a fool of me here. <laughs> well, I never make a fool of you. That's what I think, Jay. What I don't understand is why this wine is colder than that one. 
Normally we drink white wine cold and red wine at room temperature, mm -hmm. right? What can I say? Not today. You're looking at me like I'm wrong. In the beginning I told you I would prepare white wine and red wine. And normally I prepare white wine first and red wine next. And usually I prepare white wine cold and red wine at room temperature. But today you say this one is red wine and this one is white wine. I do. So I know you're telling me I'm wrong, but I, what can I do? That's how I see it. <laughs> you're correct, Peter. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> He's you difficult. You are so difficult. So what do you think they are? Red Bordeaux, kind of entry level. Uh huh. New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Okay, you're correct. <laughs> do you have any idea why I planned this? Aside from being your nasty self. <laughs> so that's a very wonderful thing. What you have picked. And I'm not sure if, you, I mean, I know you know enough, more than too much to, to, but I'm not sure if you did that because you know that I believe well-made Bordeaux has got a very definite signature. And, and does that, this have... It a, absolutely has a Bordeaux signature. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Even at this cold temperature? I like cold wine. <laughs> it's white wine's temperature. How is the quality of the second wine? It's a good wine. Wines like this are two a penny. There's a great number of them. I would say this is a mid-teens wine. Wasn't it difficult tasting cold red wine and room temperature white wine at the same time? Only because of the assumptions we all make. The assumptions we all make are exactly what you said. You serve white before red, young before old, dry before sweet, and cold before warm. Yeah. <laughs> Those assumptions may work as a trap. Right, absolutely. Yeah. We are all trapped by the shorthand of our experiences. I could have said, Jay would never give me, he knows so much about wine, he would never give me a red wine before a white wine. Mm -hmm. He would never do that. Not only that, he would never chill the red wine and not the white wine. Mm -hmm. He just wouldn't do that. He knows too much. And I hope you guys realize that you saw me putting it on the line there. He's asking me, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Meaning, you're full of it. You're wrong. I'm giving you a chance to change your mind. Uh -huh. And I'm sticking to my guns. I'm saying, I'm sure, I'm sure, and I'm sure. And I'm thinking, 20 minutes from now, I have to go out and shoot myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, no. I've gone through the, exactly the same tasting about 15 years ago with 40 people, 40 wine professionals. About 50% of them got it wrong. That means they don't know. Did so, you get them right? I got it right. And you didn't even know me yet. That's true. <laughs> if you've got two wines, and 50% of the people get it wrong, it means they were all guessing. <laughs> and 50% of them guessed right. You know, you have a 50-50 chance when you're guessing. So if they all guessed, if they never tasted the wine and they all guessed, you'd get the same result, right? <laughs> right that's true. So that's what it shows you, is none of them knew. They all guessed. <laughs> all right. But they worked in wine business for like uh, 30 years or so. So they had lots of experience, I thought. So they did have lots of experience, but they hadn't created the most important thing that experienced tasters create, which is a taste memory. You put all these sensations in filing cabinets in your brain. And when you sniff, as we did in this case, mm -hmm. it unlocks the filing cabinets and says, I've been there. I know this. I've done this before. Not once, but many, many times. And that's what this is. And if you don't work hard on developing that mechanism to transfer the sensations to filing cabinets in your brain, then you can't do this. This is one of the reasons, dear viewers, why Jay and I are so exhausted after we do this. Because it's really hard work. Yeah. It's brain work. Yeah, to find uh, that old cabinet and to draw out the exact file, right? Yeah. Yeah. The older I get, the more I realize that human beings are so unbelievably fallible because exactly because of their experiences so wine professionals can be confused about the identity of the wines if they don't see the color but some superstars can be an exception <laughs> <laughs> that's the conclusion of today <laughs> It was fun doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was very fun. I've always wanted to do this, but I was afraid of uh, you shouting at me and <laughs> swearing at me. I'm waiting till we shut the camera off, and then I'm going to start shouting. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, guys, and don't forget, 
<laughs> Give us a love or two. Give me the two glasses, please. Your two glasses and mine. Why? I want to break them so you don't do this again. <laughs> That's not nice, Peter. <laughs> if you want to learn about wine seriously from Peter and me, please click on the join button right next to the subscription box. Then click on wine class join button. This is way better than any other wine school in the world. A new wine class video is uploaded once every week and we also do a wine class on live streaming once a month. If you don't like it, you can cancel it anytime.